atmospherics here are no good. We will need suits. Adrian, 
Jen sent you. She's... Did... Did she look okay? Sounds like Adrian. Watch that woman lose a digit trying to get a better tissue sample. What? You can reattach a finger, Percy. Adrian said that, huh? If she made you come all the way for this... Let's get inside. I need to see these cells. Gonna ask you to not touch anything. Got some projects in the works down here, and I wasn't expecting guests. Oh, and Lou mentioned how you took care of the dead. Can't say I'm thrilled the Trade Authority got their mitts on the research, but I guess that's the price you pay not to live in a cave the rest of your days. All queued up. Let's gaze into this abyss, shall we? All right, just get those cellular markers tagged. Wait. Where are the markers? This... this can't be right. This sample... it's... Londinian. I'll... I'll need to get this all in the slate. Adrian really gave you this sample. You're not lying to me? Because if you told me this was a hoax, and it'd be the best damn fake I've ever seen, I'd be mad and very, very relieved. Can't just humor an old man, huh? This sample, it's got all the indicators of the worst terramorph attack in human history. I presume you've heard of Londinian. It was a city wiped completely off the map by terramorphs. The swarms are so bad, they had to blow the spaceport and seal the place off from the galaxy at large. Not a lot of samples made it off the world from the time of the attack, but the ones that did, well, they look just like this one. I didn't detect any of the telltale signatures this specimen ever sat on a ship while it was alive, either. I don't think it was transported to Talzetti. This specimen, it grew there, faster than any Terramorph should. Which means, if we're about to start a new era in human Terramorph relations, where big, sudden Londinian-style attacks can happen outside Londinian, that's not gonna end well for humanity. The chances for survival, let alone maintaining any kind of functioning society, would be slim indeed. So you lugged this bad omen all the way here. You want to tell me what your plans are for it now? The circle, huh? Here, faster we take the lift to the surface. Not supposed to use it, but given the circumstances, I'm inclined to just ask forgiveness.
the abridged version of what went down. Yeah, I can't thank you enough for taking care of all that. Makes two of us. I hope it ultimately didn't end up being too much trouble. That's... well, that's certainly not what I was expecting you'd have to go through. But thank you. I'm just glad you both came through intact. So, were you two able to get that work up together? Got it right here. That sample? It's an exact match for the ones from Londinian. Londinian? That's... that's exactly what I was afraid of. Not thrilled to be the bearer of that kind of news. That's for damn sure. So tell me you've got some kind of plan for that work up. Well, right now, we've got more questions than answers. So I've been trying to figure out what it's going to take to access our old Terramorph data. Good place to start. What'd you find? It's in the archives. The Armistice Archives? Doesn't that mean we'd be dealing with the Cabinet? And the Freestar Collective? And House Varun somehow? Guess we can kiss that approach goodbye. I didn't think the Cabinet would be willing to hear us out either. But I called in some favors. They've agreed to hear us out on two conditions. One, they want to see this analysis you two have procured. And two, they want to discuss what happened on Tau Ceti. With both of us. Of course, you deserve the full story. Percival and I, we're not just researchers. We were military scientists ran a division of the UC together that deployed aliens on the battlefield as weapons. Place I was hiding out. That was our unit's home base. After some early fits and starts at other facilities, the place eventually became the heart of UC Xeno warfare. A practice that's been banned ever since the armistice went into effect almost 20 years ago. And the UC military cut us loose for what we'd done. Well, that, um, that means a lot. It's not something I'm exactly proud of. But it was during that assignment that the UC asked us to explore deploying terramorphs on the battlefield. The project never got off the ground, but the data our team gathered is now sitting in the archives, along with all the other information banned after the colony war. Under the watchful eye of monitors from all the galactic factions still participating in regular politics. But if we can convince the cabinet to help us access that data, it'll give us the tools we need to decipher what exactly this sample might mean. And hopefully, how to prevent more attacks like the one that spawned it. I mean, I hope they will. But accessing the archives, it's not 100% up to them. They'll also need the consent of the other signatories of the Colony War Armistice, the Freestar Collective and House Varun, in order to unlock it. Since neither group is exactly on great terms with the UC at the moment, for various reasons. 
Exactly. It's going to mean negotiations and deals and plenty of diplomatic legwork to see this through. But I don't see a better option to solving what's going on here. So it's going to be up to us to get them on board. All right. I'm gonna go get this work up into the cabinet's hands. I'll meet you out front of Mast in New Atlantis. Good luck. You two are gonna need it. Yes, you For me? I certainly do. Talk to you later.
here. The workup's in the cabinet's hands. They said they'll call for us once they've gotten to properly review it. But listen, I know I should have been more forthcoming about who I was earlier. So, in the interest of full disclosure, there's one more thing you ought to know before we head up there. My relationship with the UC. It's more complicated than it might seem at first glance. The UC's actually the only reason I'm here in the first place. I am a clone of a man named Francois Sanon, one-time fleet admiral of the UC during the Colony War, former head of the UC Navy. They called him Ve Victus. Woe to the defeated in Old Earth Latin, a title he earned. The program I was a part of, it was the UC's attempt to create a new generation of military minds from one of their most respected tacticians. Secure the leadership of the UC military for generations to come. A non-trivial amount of gene editing. Clone, honestly, isn't even really the right term for our relationship, thanks to the amount of donor material that was required to bring me into this world. He and I are different on more than a few levels. But there's no denying the fact we're inextricably linked. He would have happily told you he was one of the greats. Ultimately, though, it didn't matter. The man I was cloned from, my father, was executed for acts he committed during the war. The man caused a lot of death on both sides. Freestar Collective and UC. Military. And the things he did, well, they're a part of the reason the UC and Freestar Collective aren't really on great terms to this day. So my involvement, it could be another obstacle they throw at us up there. I just wanted you to be forewarned. I, I really appreciate you saying that. I just thought you deserved to know, considering how much you've done already. You know, while we've got a second, was there anything else we needed to discuss? I know you got dropped into the middle of this pretty fast. Or if you've got any last minute business to it. No telling how long the cabinet's gonna keep us waiting out here. I strain from the amount of reading I've got on the horizon if we succeed. The Terramorph project never went anywhere. It couldn't. They are deadly creatures, but they aren't xenoweapons. The cabinet not opening the archives is probably a bigger risk than them handing over the files. That data itself isn't dangerous, which probably wouldn't be a bad point for us to bring up, should the opportunity arise. Then I guess it's just a matter of... The cabinet meeting is about to begin. All parties, please proceed to the cabinet chambers. Sounds like our cue. Here we go. must be the captain Hadrian mentioned in her report. You have our thanks for the risks you faced in securing this information. Well, I'll be sure your commanding officer hears that you've done them satisfactorily. Now then, we have two petitioners here making a surprising request. Access to the UC Xeno Warfare team's Terramorph data currently housed in the Armistice Archives, a request which will require not just this body's agreement, but that of all three Armistice signatories. You see, Freestar Collective and House Varun. Now, Captain, we've all read Hadrian's report on the subject, but we have yet to hear from you. Perhaps you could summarize for the Cabinet what it is you see as the goal of this endeavor.
That's quite the leap, Cap. Madam President, I object to the very premise of this meeting. While no one would argue that what happened on Tau Ceti was anything less than a tragedy, terror morph attacks are not some sudden new threat on the horizon. They've been happening for generations. To demand, we hand over banned archival knowledge and possibly upset the balance of galactic diplomacy because of a single attack seems at best panic. And at worst, a power grab by the daughter of a bloodthirsty warmonger and her associates. I would remind the chief diplomat who he's speaking to. If it's my father you're looking to address, you're welcome to consult a medium. I would also ask how many deaths the cabinet requires to act. 50? 50,000? Because if tragedies like Tau Ceti are just prelude to more attacks, I have no doubt you'll get the body count you require. Let's keep this civil, shall we? And while there should be no doubt, the preservation of life stands paramount among this body's duties. Chief Yassin has a point. Will a single attack, however troubling, be sufficient to convince the other factions to grant us access to what they no doubt consider weapon data? I don't think it's enough. Perhaps you can help, Captain. As the one who actually collected the sample in question, did this terramorph seem at all alarming to you? That is worth considering. This attack took place on an almost completely uninhabited world. The casualties were minimal as a result. But if there's another attack, will we be so lucky? Hmm. Yes, a fine point, Admiral. So then, Captain, given the discussion now and the information you've been privy to thus far, if you were in our position, would you grant the request made to open the archives? You are correct, but it must be considered that with the data in hand, someone else could succeed where that program failed. That? I hadn't thought of that, Captain. An excellent point indeed. The other powers would likely be much more inclined to work with us knowing that. Chief Diplomat. That? That point? Is a good one. Very well, you have my agreement. The galaxy is lucky you were here today, Captain. You and I are in agreement, Chief Diplomat. So, if there are no other objections, I believe we can agree to give our full backing to make the request to... What was that? Attention. An incident has occurred. Facility lockdown engaged. Incident? Chief Sarkin, what's happening? There's been an attack at the spaceport. Terramorphs. Terramorphs? More attacks. Just as predicted. Good God. Oh, no. There, there must be another explanation. The, the creatures evaded our scanner somehow. There will be plenty of time for conjecture later. Chief Sarkin, order the evacuation of the spaceport and have your men contain the things, but do it discreetly. The last thing we need is a citywide panic. Yes, ma'am. Admiral Logan, the local barracks can provide support. I'll make the order myself. The nearest anti Xeno squad, though, is off world. Let it take a while to bring them in. Well then. We'll have to make do with the tools we've got. You two, we can't risk those things getting out of the spaceport. I want you both on the next train there. We'll let them know you're coming and that you've dealt with these things before. Now go show them how it's done. We're on it, ma'am. Captain, I'm right behind you. Let's get down there.
one down. And once again, we are triumphant. God, you got here when you did. I... I just wish it hadn't come to that. Yeah, what the hell happened back there, Captain? There's no excuse for using lethal force here. Sorry doesn't bring these people back. A crisis isn't licensed to cast aside your morals. Now, the way those people were acting, I've seen this before. They were under the Terramorph's influence, weren't they? I... I don't know. They were down at the port, and they just started... screaming. We tried to restrain them, get them on the train to get them out of harm's way, but... but some of the other officers down there... we couldn't restrain them fast enough. They just... started firing on us. People we knew. They went berserk. Thermonic projection. Some Terramorphs, they can induce this fog. It affects everyone differently, but some people just lose control, turn against everyone around them, even if they don't want to. They're like a puppet. You kill the morph, you break the hold. But this means we're gonna need to be real careful with our fire and keep that EM weapon at the ready. I'm not suggesting. It's documented behavior. The result of the projection, though, can vary wildly. Some folks just shrug it off. Others hallucinate. And some lose control altogether. They'll lash out at anyone around them. But still, be aware while they're doing it. Those cases, you'll either need to knock them out with EM fire, or free them by killing the Terramorph. Let's do it. That's unlocked. Please, do what you can to help them.
Do you have any experience with Terramorphs before? Only the brief they just gave on the way here, but we know how to handle pressure. Surviving a full-on mental assault isn't the same as keeping your cool in a firefight. Might make you more liability than asset. We're not UC security. You don't need to worry about us. Roger that. We're... so lucky. The few protecting the many. And it would have been plenty more if it hadn't been for the two of you. 
The city owes you both a debt after this. We were just in the right place at the right time. Captain, we should report back to the President. Let her know the Terramorphs have been dealt with. Take care of yourself, Sergeant. Thank you, gentlemen. The Captain? Hadrian? It would appear that the Cabinet it. owes you our thanks for what you did for the city today. As well as an apology. Your concerns about the Terramorphs will consider them validated. Thank you, ma'am. Of course. I only wish we could have acted sooner. Now. Today's events have only clarified our path forward in the eyes of the Cabinet. You will have our full support in collecting the Terramorph data from the Archives, as well as a subsequent investigation into the nature of these attacks. But to accomplish those goals, we're going to need the right people in the right places. As such, the Cabinet has authorized me to reinstate you, Hadrian, effective immediately, to your former rank of Major. As soon as we've got the data in hand, we want you investigating these attacks and how to stop them. Will you do this? I... Y yes Yes, ma'am. I'd be honored. Excellent. But as you've both made clear, for such an investigation to succeed first, we're going to need someone to convince the Free Star Collective and House Varun to play ball. Someone who knows precisely the sorts of dangers the colonies and all the galaxy are facing right now. The Cabinet wants you, Captain, to be that representative. The Cabinet wants progress and wants it quickly. You're already far more familiar with the situation than any diplomat would be. There's also no diplomat alive that can claim they helped keep a cadre of Terramorphs off the embassy doorsteps. The cabinet was unanimous. They want you. We do. In exchange, we're willing to fast track your citizenship upon collection of the data. So, I'm glad to hear it. Now, we of course won't be sending you in without the proper support. Deputy McIntyre in the Office of Interstellar Affairs will be your guide on gaining access to the archives. You should be able to find her in her office across the hall. And on behalf of the whole of the United Colonies, you have our thanks. We're dismissed. edge of technology here. It's an exciting place to be. <clears throat> Have you seen these orders? A Vanguard captain. You... Yes, sir. I'll make sure they get what they require. That must make you my Vanguard captain. Welcome to Interstellar Affairs. I'm Deputy Chief Diplomat McIntyre, Chief Yassine's second-in-command. I heard you were instrumental in protecting the city from the attack. You have my gratitude. I was also informed that you gave quite the presentation to the cabinet. Chief Yassine wants you to know the Interstellar Affairs Office is fully committed to this endeavor, accessing the Terramorph data and beyond. 
We're going to do everything in our power to make sure you have the tools you need. And that means first getting you into the Archives. You do know what the Archives are, correct? Hmm. Someone paid attention in current events. So, then you also know that it was originally managed by the three major galactic players. Access to the Archives is only granted in cases of dire emergency and requires a one-time use code from each of the three Armistice Signatories. UC, Freestar Collective, and House Varun. Now, the UC is already on board, so that means we'll need to convince two people, the Ambassadors of the Freestar Collective and House Varun, to hand over their codes. Get them both and you'll have your data. But that's a lot easier said than done. Very funny. This is going to be hard enough already. Both ambassadors have reasons they won't, or can't, work with us. Now, I'll provide guidance on how we believe you can acquire each code, but ultimately, it'll be up to you to get them both to cooperate. And I do mean cooperate. Threats and violence are off the table here. Though no, that doesn't mean we can't get creative. But it does mean we need to get you up to speed on who you're dealing with. Who do you want to start with? Ambassador Radcliffe of Freestar, or Ambassador Balmore? Ah, <sighs> the good Ambassador Radcliffe. She's a veteran of the Colony War, and her only goal in life is to make ours miserable. Hmm, it sounds as though I will enjoy this. Now, officially, our office is suggesting you try and negotiate with her. Use your experiences as a member of the military and with the threat we're facing to convince her to lend her support. And who knows? Maybe that'll work. Stranger things have happened. But my suspicion is we're going to have to rely on other tools to get her code. Certainly. See, good diplomacy is all about the careful application of pressure. We just need to find the squeeze. UC Intelligence has a recording device planted in the Ambassador's living quarters, which we suspect you can use to your advantage. But getting caught trespassing is a quick way to land yourself in an embassy holding cell. So, if you are going to try and access the device, you're going to need to find a way in there without being seen. Now, we recovered some intel we believe should be able to help with that. But there's also a disgruntled staff member you might be able to pump for information. Maybe even convinced to work with you. Yes, many. Don't steal anything. Don't get caught anywhere you're not supposed to. Absolutely do not harm anyone. If something goes wrong, we'll do our best to smooth things over. But I can't make any promises. Name's Cameron Long. He's younger than Ratcliffe bears less of a grudge towards the UC. He works closely with the Ambassador, making him a promising source for information on the ins and outs of Embassy life, and someone who very likely hates her guts. All right. Here, your diplomatic ID. I'll give them a heads up, you're on your way. Not likely to let you through the door otherwise. And take these. Chief Yassine wanted you to have some options on how to proceed in there. Ambassador Balmore's a challenge. When the rest of House Varun retreated into seclusion shortly after the signing of the armistice, Balmore stayed here. He's since lent his support to a small number of archival requests, so there's real hope he might again. Though claiming to know how a member of House Varun thinks is a quick way to earn yourself a psych eval. Well, these days, they're primarily considered a security threat. House Varun Zealots, a fundamentalist outshoot of the group that stayed behind when the rest retreated into seclusion, want nothing more than to send everyone not dedicated to their cause to the Great Serpent in the Sky. But that hasn't always been the case. After they ended the Serpent's Crusade about 70 years back, House Varun did take a real run at trying to normalize relations with the rest of the galaxy. It's why they have an embassy here in the first place. 
why they were included in the armistice negotiations, but then, without warning, they left, leaving behind, to our knowledge, just the ambassador and his duty under the armistice. Yes, just like us. How magnanimous of you. Of course, but there is another wrinkle. We're not 100% sure Balmor is actually still alive. His public appearances were always rare, but it's been several years now since he last poked his head out. Scans of the facility show life signs, but not the kind we were expecting. Your task is to find him and kindly but firmly remind him of his duties under the armistice. It would at least be a speedier negotiation, but I, of course, hope the ambassador is alive and well. Now, the embassy front door isn't an option, but our spies have stated there's a side entrance that should allow you access. Here, this device should get you all the way down to the embassy interior. Once you're inside, though, finding the ambassador is going to be up to you. And fair warning, we received a report that alarms might have been tripped inside the embassy during the attacks. Watch out for automated security in there. Now, if you have additional questions or require clearance for a new approach we haven't already discussed, don't hesitate to ask. I'd suggest you start with Ambassador Radcliffe. Approach her while the attack is still fresh in her and her staff's mind. Be smart out there, Captain. offices or conference room that means you i wonder how many times one side or the other has threatened to close this embassy down over the years wish I hadn't received the news from an SSNN broadcast. We have a strategic advantage to maintain, Mr. Long. Of course, ma'am. I'll make sure it doesn't happen again. Uh, excuse me. Are you supposed to be in here? I'm sorry. Do you have an appointment? What are you? Ah, you're the one McIntyre called about. The eyewitness. She said you were at the spaceport. You have my thanks for what you did down there, truly. Saved many lives. Now, she also mentioned that, and maybe it was just a bad connection, that now the UC wants Terramorph data from the Armistice Archives, some of the most highly guarded information in the galaxy, in order to protect us all. I can only presume you're here to tell me I misheard her and that they didn't send you, local hero, to futilely beg on their behalf. Tell me I've got that right. Oh, stop. You're embarrassing yourself. 
Yes, I would request the same. This is unpleasant to watch. See, even your compatriot can't stomach such a sorry display. Let me be frank, Captain. The answer is no. That information is there because it is dangerous. I will not be the one responsible for its release. Now, why don't you quit wasting my time and yours and go? You're really gonna push this? All right, I will give you one chance. One I'm listening. You know that for sure. That is interesting. I suppose you're right. Our job and our responsibility. You think this is about a grudge? <laughs> this is about safety. And that's not... Captain, I'm... is an absolute... Oh, sorry. Oh, what? You're the Vanguard captain, right? You know, I was about to board the Nat to the spaceport when the alarm triggered. Sounds like I got real lucky. And like I've got you to thank for things not being a lot uglier. Doubt the Vanguard would have a lot of recruits if that were the job description. But I'll take your point. But, but look, they said you were coming here on official business. The ambassador likes to handle all that personally, even if she does have trained diplomats here to help her. And I don't want to get shipped back to Aquila City, so you should probably go speak to her. Uh, uh what, you, you want me to work for you? Um, <clears throat> huh. maybe, uh... Let's go somewhere to talk. me to work with you but why now why me no I, I think that's a pretty safe assumption and no other city should have to go through what happened here so then uh, what would you need from me The code machine. Only the ambassador's cleared for in there. Sorry. Okay, uh... <clears throat> First, you need her bio key, and that thing doesn't leave her side. Better chance of splitting the atom with a spoon than me getting that from her. Her quarters. Huh. Well, that's doable. And you... And the UC will be providing me with... What? For my sir... Wait, I thought you were looking to hire me. Oh, I'm not taking a bribe. Uh oh, uh... <clears throat> okay, so... There's a utility corridor that leads to the Ambassador's Quarters, which you can access through the main conference room. Here, the key. Whatever you do... Don't let the guard see you entering or exiting the utility section, or you're gonna be in serious hot water. I'll, uh, I'll keep an ear out for more instructions from the UC.
Everyone's a little on edge after the attack. Did I not make myself abundantly clear? No, Captain, I'm not, and I'll tell you why. What you experienced down there fought tooth and nail as aliens rampaged in the... But my aliens were placed there by UC. So I'm not interested in anyone getting power like that ever again. You have my answer. Now, please take the hint. I guess you will. Make myself abundantly clear. Excuse me? I, I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, uh, no, no. If the council found out, I'd lose my position. I'd be exiled. I'd be. Look. I believe we may have gotten off on the wrong foot. The issue at hand is one of trust, no? So perhaps if I can trust you to keep this little secret between us, then maybe we can find a way to trust the UC with access to the archives. Good, good. I appreciate you working with me. Just like I'm sure our great powers will. In fact, I think there's an opportunity here. Keep both our factions happy and ensure an air of legitimacy to the whole proceeding. I can only let you get the information on the Terramorphs. Anything else and people will get suspicious. And all research will need to be monitored. Freestar scientific observers making sure everything's being used for the right purposes. But those two items should be enough to allay any suspicions. Good, good. 
Okay, let's go get... themselves comfortable in the lobby. Certainly different than anything else in New Atlantis.
now on
So, what seems punishment becomes providence. <laughs> A reminder we can never truly know the Great Serpent's designs for us. You have my thanks, and my apologies for the ordeal you just endured. Come, let us discuss. Not the ideal introduction, I suppose, giving you a grand tour of the embassy via barely functioning intercoms. <laughs> I do greatly appreciate your persistence. I suspect the Venom Tree upstairs has worked itself into more systems than I'd realized. But then again, who could cage such a beauty? <laughs> Tell me, though, what is it like outside? I heard the broadcast mentioning an attack, uh, then the embassy was struck with a power surge, and then... Silence. Has the rest of the city suffered quite so badly? <sighs> Is that right, huh? I shall need to have these repairs seen to sooner rather than later. Now, it cannot solely be the Serpent's Grace that brought you here at such an opportune moment. You were sent by the UC. That much is obvious. Who else could just waltz through my door? And the broadcast spoke of terror morphs at the spaceport. A worrying occurrence, certainly, but coming here of all places, when all I could provide is some enthused cheerleading and... Ah, an archive code. So, the UC requires information, then. On terror morphs, presumably, hmm? Do I see this all clearly? Yeah, the preservation of life stands as the very purpose of the Archives. Using its data to prevent more attacks... There is logic there. But, if I am to grant you access, I have a requirement. For years, House Varun has been known only as an agent of slaughter. We founded this embassy with hopes of shedding that legacy, with little success. In exchange for my code, I require this. You must be the one who ensures it is used for good. Ensure House Varun's legacy is more than just car- The knowledge you ask for isn't evil. No knowledge is. It is we who bend it to evil ends. Oh, you must assure me this will be used to save lives, not endanger them. Every measure will be taken to ensure the information is used for good. Well, then I shall not fear. Please. Follow. If you are free soon, could we talk? of House Varun are our own. They left. That is all there is to be said on the subject. House Varun committed itself to the armistice. This was said at the time to be the desire of the Great Serpent, and I do not believe the Serpent decides such things on a whim. So, when my brethren left, I remained, honoring the Serpent's will as I saw fit, as is the right of all his followers. It was tolerable, even pleasant, when my brethren were here in the embassy with me. We remade this place as best we could into a home we all would recognize. Our native flora, our iconography, our connection to the serpent. With my brethren gone, it has been trying. But the great serpent has always provided me a path in my dark. 
great serpent is so much more than... When our founder, Jinan Varun, left the United Colonies 140 years ago for distant stars, it was the serpent that compelled him to found his now great... The serpent made us who we are today. Its voice speaks to us. curious. I know that your role in Constellation was thrust upon you in an unusual way. But that experience does not demand that you stay. You could have delivered the artifact and then left. It does seem to be a unique situation with serious consequences. That is what keeps me here as well. My past is complicated. And anyone in Constellation will tell you I do not speak much of it. But my family always stressed the importance of having a purpose in life. You must have a reason for being. Yes, that is one way of putting it. I am often surprised at how reluctant some are to agree with the idea. They sometimes seem offended I would suggest such a thing. When I first came to New Atlantis, I was shocked at how many people go about their business every day like drones. They do their jobs, eat their food, sleep in their beds, all seemingly without concern for anything around them. Complacent. Their experience is so different from much of the settled systems. They do not know how good they have it. Yes, they were. I did not grow up amidst such luxury. Purpose cuts through adversity. I know that all too well. And these people seem to have no idea. I have. There have been times where I wondered whether it was worth it. My family is unique within the settled systems. I grew up outside the bounds of the United Colonies, or the Free Star Collective. My parents, and their parents before them, did not believe anyone outside our family could be trusted or relied upon. You can imagine, I am sure, how existence without ties to others is challenging in space. It has certainly proven valuable. Saved me, a few times, without question. Now, though, it would seem you and I have found purpose in Constellation. I believe that is enough. Ah, hello. I am always willing...
So, yes. Goodbye. I also wish to be prepared for any situation, but there are practical limits, no? Items may require multiple levels of approval. Welcome to UC. Di oh, well.
Right, right. Come back if you need something else. 